Hello, hello, welcome back. As always, we're your hosts, Lou Romero and Christina Campos. Last week, we discussed the Industrial Revolution and its impact on our Western civilization. By the way, have you heard about the proposal of the anti-phone law? You mean the California phone ban on school campuses? That's the one. Jeez, who do they think they are? You know what this reminds me of? I don't know. What does it remind you of? You remember the Volstead Act? Nothing screams 1920s like the Volstead Act. Ah, oh, yes. The 1920s, the music, the jazz, the art, and those flappers, better known as the Roaring Twenties, our economy was booming. That really was an influential era. All these glorious innovations. I mean, besides prohibition. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Prohibition. <laughs> that thing that made its way into the Constitution as the 18th Amendment? You know, the Constitution, that document that's supposed to give us rights to the people. Well, the 18th Amendment actually took something away from us citizens. What is prohibition exactly? Well, prohibition is having something that's taken away from you. So I had my phone and some my parents walked up to me and took it away? Well, then you have your phone rights prohibited. Oh no, anything but that. So in the 1920s, imagine this, but with alcohol. So I think the thing is here, a lot of people don't realize that back then, alcohol was actually a really big part of the culture. You know, partying, going out, swing dancing, jazz, it was, it was all incorporated in the culture. And when you have one big thing like alcohol taken away, it takes away a really big part of that. A lot of souls have just come back from the war. This is like 1920s, only a couple years after World War One, And to suddenly come home, and then a couple years later be told, no, and it's, it's so much bigger than this too because it was written in the Constitution. So as you can imagine, people were fired up over this. Speakeasies were these underground places where alcohol was served. People had to speak quietly, they had to speak easy. Get it? It led to bootlegging, which is the illegal production and selling of liquor, which leads me to a really interesting figure, I believe. He was one of the biggest bootleggers. He was an American lawyer named George Zeman. So he saw clients who were making part of the bootlegging industry. They were becoming incredibly wealthy. After seeing this, he decided to become a bootlegger himself, and he used his knowledge to, of the law to escape punishment. How did he do this? Well, Mr. Remus actually found a loophole in the Volstead Act, which said that one could legally obtain alcohol from distilleries and pharmacies to produce bonded liquor for medical uses. He then would have the police hijack his liquor and sell it illegally. His intelligence and cunning abilities earned him the title King of the Bootleggers. You know who else that reminds me of? Who? Who? <laughs> Al Capone. So how did he do it? He resorted to bootlegging, prostitution, and illegal gambling. He took advantage of that hype of the roaring 20s, creating these illegal rings that people would go to and throw money at night after night. Do you remember when we talked about Mark Twain on the podcast a few weeks ago? Oh, that's right. Well, guess who's back? Mark Twain? Mark Twain's back and he's against prohibition. He wrote a lot about it. He discussed how it wasn't practical. How do you think Mark Twain would react to this phone ban on school campuses? I mean, I feel like he'd react very interestingly considering that he said about the Prohibition Act, evidence proves that prohibition only drives drunkenness behind doors and into dark places and does not cure it or even diminish it. And that letter was sent out through Atla, California, 1862. Wow, Prohibition, bootleggers, Al Capone, even Mark Twain? This is getting a bit too much to keep track of, but I think I might need a break. That's a good idea. In the meantime, consider Mark Twain's quote. Why is it important? And how could it apply to the phone laws today? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Abyss. All history, all the time. So the progressive movement started here in California. And yes. initially, this movement, in order to actually get powerful during their seven plus year run in California, they took some lessons from the women's movement. In return, should the progressives win the government in California, women got what they needed. They wanted to prohibit, you know, alcohol. And so I think the phone ban is supposed to be for the well-being of the community. I mean, what about breaking lunch? You know, that when you just want to kind of look at your phone. Taking phones away really allows the students to branch out into their real-world relationships. Uh -huh. That's an interesting way to look at it. So looking into this phone ban for schools, based on what we've read about prohibition, it failed. 1933, FDR signed it into effect the 21st Amendment. So, question here is, is it going to pass? Is it going to fail? Is it going to happen? Is it going to have repercussions if it does? And if it does, 
What do you think? Wow, wasn't that an exciting episode? The flappers, the jazz, the singing, the economy's booming. Yeah, and not to mention the prohibition, bootleggers, Al Capone. Everybody was getting involved. And Mark Twain? Come on. Oh, what an exciting adventure. I know. We'll be switching gears next week when we talk about the Great Depression. Great Depression. 1930s. The economy wasn't as booming. It was very slow. And there was less jazz. But one thing did come out. The end of Prohibition. 1933. FDR. So join us next week when we get into that. Tune in next week. We'll be waiting. Amazing. Thank you.